Gareth, welcome to Show Studio. Thank you. Um, I want to start by asking, it's always a bit of a tricky question, I guess, when you've, when you've done a whole season, you've prepared the whole show, but yeah. for me, this show, it felt like a bit of a departure. It felt quite new, both in everything from kind of some of the ordering to some of the, like, the palette that you use, but mainly just in the sense of it felt very much kind of, and I think you said this in an interview, it felt a little bit more um, less definite than other mm. shows, more like you were considering things rather than proposing kind of a, a complete statement. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about how all the ideas for the show came about, and, and am, I, am I right when I say that? Was it a bit Yeah, more? I mean, this, it's, a, it's a difficult one to sort of describe, and I'm, I'll try and give you the abridgement, but um, um, just after my last show, um, I had dinner with um, Katie Shillingford, the, my stylist, and her husband, this guy Lex mm. um, Drumgold, he's a music producer. Um, and he, we were just chatting and he told me about this film that he'd found online of um, kind of like a geeky science experiment with metronomes. Um, and it's 32 all going at their own pace and then um, the momentum of what the platform at which they're standing on sort of makes them eventually um, find a rhythm and they're all click and sync. And it's kind of... It sounds stupid, but it was one of these things that I saw um, and kind of latched onto. It just seemed really perfect. Um, the idea of, um, I don't know, it translates to a lot of different things. I mean, we kind of, I wanted to do a film with Ruth and I was going to do some, like an artful version of that mm. um, video of the metronomes for, as a precursor to my show. Yeah. Um, and then of course, this um, Amnesty International project came of along. Course. And we, you know, the, the whole idea, that's why I say it can transfer to a lot of different um, ideas, this idea of um, clarity um, through chaos or um, speaking with one voice or um, something quite singular. Um, you know, because there's, just talking about my show in particular, there's a lot of different people with a lot of different opinions mm. who, whether or not they come and see it or whether or not from the kind of commercial side, kind of, you know, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, noise. A lot of noise. And sometimes <laughs> I think. Um, also, it's kind of interesting. You should say that because I've got like this tinnitus thing in this ear. Mm. Um, and you know, when I was kind of 15, the doctor gave me this. It's like a white noise speaker that you put under your pillow to sort of cancel out this. Oh really? Um, That's noise, but you kind of it cancels it out with just listening to another noise. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this season was trying to sort of cancel everything out and be very kind of quite austere about. And maybe, it, it, I don't want it to sound at all selfish, but um, it was deciding what I wanted to do and kind of just trying to be very singular to that rather mm. than allowing any other outside influences to sort of direct. You know, it was kind of a scary show to do, especially in Paris, um, showing a very, very uncommercial collection, um, um, which is something that I, I, I do and feel quite confident doing. Um, it's just that this one was pretty... Um, pretty kind of important for me to get right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when things, certain things seem appropriate and this show just had to happen. It was one of those kind of things of taking everything back to, to zero and taking a breath and going, okay, why am I doing this and what do I want to achieve from doing this? Because, you know, when you do a show, it's very easy. I mean, I don't like to feel at all that I turn things out. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, when you start to do pre-collection and menswear and womenswear, and it's every yeah. it's like this whole cycle, mm. you know, and it's obviously uh, you know there's obvious comparisons of like a hamster wheel. Once <laughs> you get on it and start running, you can't yeah. stop. Um, so it's kind of um, my way of just um, kind of zoning out a little bit and not mm. proposing a finished idea. It's you know when you when you um, kind of identify, I guess, that things need to change or things need to alter. Um, you can't do that in a six month period. Mm. Um, so this is sort of like saying, um, I guess for me, that um, things in my head or people's perceptions of the way things are done need to change, but this isn't the change. This is just saying, it's a proposition, mm. I guess, which, um, which was, like I say, it was kind of a scary thing to do, but it was, we had a lot of fun putting it together. Mm. Um, so yeah, I kind of hope that answers your question. No, it does. <laughs> it's interesting to me, this idea that it needs to be, you know, you talk about the pace of fashion and that it needs to be acceptable to not always do something that feels 
100% complete. And but I also to sort of think of, uh, um, you know, sometimes, it, I mean, I don't, like I say, I don't like to do it myself, but sometimes it, I can completely understand if it's a case of, shit, what we're going to do this season. Mm. Um, let's, like, go to the library and look, you know, it's kind yeah. of, I don't, I don't do that myself. And it, things need to feel a little bit more genuine. It's very difficult to make things feel totally genuine within this very difficult time frame, you mm. know. And um, it's great. I really thrive upon that. Um, but it's I can really see how difficult it can be. And um, yeah, but it's hard to do anything from the gut or from your intuition, isn't it? Yeah. So rather than going, you know, oh, it's about this or it's about this, you know, thing that I have mm. no connection with. Um, that I'm just kind of going to say that that's what the collection's about this season and move on to something else, which um, is not something that, I, again, like I said, it's not something that I like to do. Um, so this season was much more about trying to turn my back on anything like that and to do something that literally just felt quite raw and quite genuine and quite, um, yeah, quite confrontational in that sense mm. of this is got actually nothing to do with anything particular but it's got something to do with everything everything <laughs> no that really makes sense i'm eager to look at the show because i think that really comes across but yeah. one question i have and it's is a bit of a it's something that i don't think gets talked about enough and it's a topic that really interests me which is the relationship between a designer and the stylist they work with and you mentioned katie you know katie Schillingford right at the start of this conversation and yeah. she's worked with you for so long tell me a bit about that working relationship and well, Katie's great in the fact that we've known each other for a long time, you know, even before um, I started to do what I was doing and, you know, we were just kind of drinking kind of cans of Red Stripe on the back of a bus from Peckham. <laughs> um, you know, we've kind of, we sort of grew up together, I guess, in that sense in London. Like, you know, she's from London, but we were very much in my, my London infancy when we met. Mm. Um, so she knows me really well and I know her really well and it's kind of... You know, um, I, she's worked with other designers before and, um, you know, the way we work, she knows that I have a very particular idea of how I want things to look. So I won't just kind of, you know, the clothes don't turn up and we just kind of put a few reels in front of her and she has to put everything together. Mm. It's much more about I have these ideas of characters in my head that we work very hard to try and um, to sort of construct, I guess. Mm. Um, and she she allows me a, a lot of freedom to be able to do that, but she's also there to sort of um, really help to sort of direct, I guess. And she, you know, it's it's that thing when you're so close to something that you don't really see it. Mm. She's great to come in just before the show and kind of have that point of difference, sure, um, or that yeah, that distance mm. um, to actually be able to see it from an outside point of view. Yeah, give a different view on it. Um, so yeah, we it's it's very much a, a collaborative, collaborative effort. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that you say characters, because I don't know, it always does feel like your shows have a really strong narrative. So maybe, you know, when I said at the start, this show felt like a bit of a surprise for me. Maybe that was the, the thing, is it didn't feel like there was less of a sort of personality to, your, to the girls in it, mm. or, but it didn't feel like there was that same sort of story. Was that yeah. quite in, intentional? Do you usually design, I guess that's what I'm asking, do you usually design with a, a story in mind and a character in mind? Um, I, I, I do and I don't. It's mm. very, when I was showing in London, we were showing 12 outfits, it was very easy to be able to design with characters, but when you're doing like a 50 look show, um, which we, we no, nobody writes that nobody tells us what we have to do. It just mm. sometimes it feels right. It's very difficult to have um, each person a different character. So it's more thinking. We were thinking of things more in terms of groups, sure. um, which you can kind of get quite hung up on. And so for this one, we just wanted to do break all of that apart. Um, there's groups within the collection, but rather than showing things mates, in blocks, yeah, yeah. just kind of mix it all up. That really struck me when I saw it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of reminded me when I first did my um, my first show in Paris, um, where there was a very definite um, kind of thing running throughout everything. Everything was white on the front, everything was black on the back, mm. and it was even though all of the there was so many different ideas going on in that show, there was a unification of everything through that one device and it was it you know visually it was very strong and um, I think with this it was more going back to that where it could be anything it's kind of like that you know Henry Ford thing <laughs> 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 it could be anything as long as it's black whereas this season it was much more about just 
an idea. I've, you know, we, we did a lot of, uh, most of the samples are in Toile, mm. um, in Calico or in Interface and, mm. um, and in plastic. Um, you know, there was just a lot of different elements that we just thought we'd, rather than trying to make some sort of sense to it, um, to sort of try and present it in a much more um, interesting way. Because, mm. you know, it's one of those things that I don't like to think so much about what it is that we, I do. Mm. I mean, I, I, that sounds pathetic, but it's kind of, I think it's important to have a sense of, if it feels right, then do it. You don't have to worry too much about what sure. does it mean. You know, there's other people whose jobs it is to sort of pick those things apart, but mm. I don't think, for me, it's really that. It can be quite a hindrance to yeah. overthink things. So I think um, very much this season we were like, you know, Came from That's the gut. A little bit of fun, yeah. Mm. Should <laughs> we have a look at what you did? Yeah. Um, it's interesting. You were just talking to me about. Um, I'll just turn this down a little bit. You were just talking to me about um, the fabrics, and that was one thing that I found really striking. You mentioned you know, the use of interface and uh, and how it all really felt like it was processed fabrics. Yeah. Um, talk to me a bit more about that because I think it's you know you, you said it, and obviously you've been thinking about it for a whole season, so it doesn't seem new. Yeah. To, new to you, but it was inc really, really striking to see that mm. on the runway, things that felt like they were coming out of kind of your imagination when you were working. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. When you work on an idea, you work on it with fabric that you don't care about. That's really inexpensive. That mm. you can, you know, make and cut and mm. write on, and then throw away and make, make a real fabric. But there's a real beauty and um, kind of elegance to that. Um, that process mm. and to those fabrics that you are using that process and it's kind of nice to because especially when you you're really happy with how something looks and you send it away and you have it made mm. in the fabric and it doesn't come back the way you think mm. um that um that whole process is um is really interesting to I me i guess there's beauty in that as well yeah. isn't there so it's kind of trying to but then it wasn't presenting things in an unfinished way no, everything exactly, was yeah. everything you know like this for example this first look sort of a, um you know, everything's made in, it's kind of like a violin fur, violin sort of like an interfacing fabric that generally you just put between layers, between and, layers exactly. um, to sort of stiffen a fabric, whereas we made this sort of violin fur, thousands of metres of like ruffled violin mm. on a calico base. Um, so it's, it's a very, um, it's a very, very cheap um, fabric and fabrication. The silhouette, the, so it's sort of new looking, you know, it's incredibly... Yeah. But the way in which it's made is a very ridiculous kind of, I'm not going to say couture, but it's a very like crazy way of putting something together. So that was kind of our fun. Mm. <laughs> Although I think the people working at my studio may disagree. Yeah. <laughs> fun for you, or yeah. fun for them. <laughs> Let's make some more. <laughs> but but yeah. I think that contradiction I think was really, really beautiful between the silhouettes and how kind of there was a real, something really poised about, about the girls. I know that was one thing that struck me, especially, we'll talk about it later, but the kind of the wind up doll effect, you know, yeah. some aspects of it were really like the ultimate in, in feminine poise and beauty, like a mm. doll, but then this real sense of undone and process. Yeah. And that was really beautiful. Was that sort of contradiction quite intentional? Um, Sorry, I getting <laughs> distracted. Oh, you, tell me, why did you get distracted? What did you like? I am just looking at the... Um, have you not looked at it since? <laughs> I, I, I've only ever seen it once when I first got the video sent through. Oh, really? So, um, yeah. So it's a, <laughs> what's, what struck you about... I know, I was, just, I was just thinking about that violin and how much it looks like chiffon and yeah, we, or an organza and how we normally do things in that, um, whereas in the violin it, um, it looks so delicate and it's so fragile and it's kind of a strange thing to have it in there as... Um, yeah, it's quite beautiful and it's in a very particular kind of almost clinical way, you know, it's kind of like a lab coat. Yeah, exactly. Um, or an opera coat or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> lab coat, opera coat. Yeah. It's interesting actually that we happen to stop on this look because I really want to talk to you about the um, about the palette this season because it was so, you know, cream and white was completely yeah. the whole thing apart from these flashes of silver. Was that going back to this idea of purity and kind of a, a slight cleanliness? Well, it's, 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 it's that need to try and sort of um, rid the kind of collection of noise, I guess, mm. and to have um, to sort of not get hung up on details and fabrics and colours and textures. Um, I mean, there's a, quite a few textures within this, but everything kind of riffs off a very um, 
of a, of a very similar starting point, I mm. guess. You know, the shirling sort of looks a little bit like thick fur and the violin looks a little bit like shirling. And yeah. Um, yeah, and the kind of pants how they wind down and there's no join between, because the pants, Katie just call them truths, they're like trouser boots. <laughs> they're all like the truths. same the same thing. Um, I didn't sign that name off, by the way. That's going to be... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how happy I am <laughs> with that name. But um, yeah, it was trying to do something just that was quite simple, um, you know, stripping everything back to its um, component parts, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah. Talk to me about, this is actually one of my favourite looks, so talk to me a little bit about, about what we're seeing here because I feel like this ties the collection together in a really interesting way, this look. Yeah, well, you know, you've got this shape that we've had before. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, you know, this very stately kind of neckline. Mm. Um, and then we sort of, you know, we use a lot of, um, like I say, we use a lot of shelling, but we use it in a, in a kind of very raw, edged, unfinished sort of way. Mm. And it's kind of, it's sort of like a collar, but it's sort of like just tossed over and it's mm. quite loush, I guess. Um, and then, you know, we have this one. <laughs> um, Fabulous. Yeah. And, you know, it's all the things like the hands. And the hair is like a wig without the wig on, isn't it? That's, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like before you put a wig on, it's sort of like the, the hairnet. Mm. But again, we, you know, they're all like handmade, um, hand stitched in the studio. Each one took like two days, two people on it mm. to stitch. Each, each juncture is stitched four times and oh, it's, wow. it's um yeah they took a while um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah with the makeup and the hair it was just to sort of like really just make it as simple and as clean and as sort of unfussed as possible mm. and you know we the finger it looks like they're making the collection though their yeah fingers. we you know we were always worked with marion on yeah, the nails and this season it was kind of maybe just forgetting about the nails and just mm. having some sort of yeah, a little bit like, you know, there was a lot of spray painting involved in this mm. collection. Um, and it's kind of, it was, yeah, there was a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of that in the street. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it was kind of a little nod to that or just something quite like unfussy and just yeah. kind of, you know, she, it was the easiest show I think she'd ever done, I guess. Maybe <laughs> it's just like lining all of the models up Give in a, a row. Quick spritz. <laughs> and walking down the line with a spray can and it's like, okay, you're done. But I guess it goes back to this idea that we were talking about By before. the way, it was a little bit more complicated. Yeah, I know, Mario's going to be like, thanks for that. <laughs> but that was the idea. Poor anyway. teenage girls yeah. trying it at home now. <laughs> but I love that idea of kind of the ease and, and I guess just the immediacy of this collection because I think that did really come through. It, but in this strange contradiction, as we talked about, between that kind of sense of it being from the gut and not too sort of over considered and over referenced yeah. but then there's the incredible detail of each piece you know you mentioned the kind of couture like elements and the number of hours that went into it it's yeah. a really nice sort of i mean that's the thing it's yeah you're right it's kind of it it's we're trying not to think about the in the um the way that it's presented or the way that it's all put together but you know everything is very much considered you know mm. it's a uh, um yeah there's a there's a lot of thought that goes into everything. There's a lot mm. of effort that goes into everything. So mm. I think um, if, well, I think it was kind of a bit misunderstood when I was saying that because it wasn't saying that it didn't mean anything or it didn't. Um, it's not like you didn't care about it. it was yeah, just it's kind of like, well, what do you think about it? Rather than me having to be the one who always has to explain myself, it's like <laughs> <laughs> this season That's I have why no we've words. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that. I, just, I don't mean you. I just yeah. mean you know, like. Um, this I idea of you always have to justify every piece. I think there's, it? there's generally a lot of laziness when it comes to fashion journalism, and it's you know there's there's a there's an element where it's it's nice, really nice to be able to guide people and to actually tell them what you think. Whereas actually sometimes it's more interesting to think about. You know, it's when you go into an art gallery and you see this amazing thing, and then you have a connection with it, um, and it could mean so many different things to mm. so many different people. But then you have a little thing, like a little foam board thing yeah. on the side that tells you what you're supposed to think. Mm. And I think people are, I'm not, you know, not saying anybody in particular, but, and they're not even just fashion journalists, <laughs> but just people in general, I think, can be 
They want everything explained to them, don't they? It's, people can be very lazy with visuals and with, you know, like when you, you know, it's so so much about like Tumblr and images and it's all this oversaturation Mm. of things and people can just like let things wash over and it's, sometimes it's nice to just be able to go, you know what, Um, this is what I want to show and, because you know, I I make clothes but, you know, I always, I also deal in images Mm. Um, and it's, it's the images of the show that kind of, um, will last longer than I will mm. um, and it's it's I think it's important to um, consider that and to mm. say what do you want people to take from your work mm. and I think um, that visual language that people um, communicate with is, is maybe is not lost its value but because of the volume mm. I think it's uh, it's important sometimes to take a step back and um, really consider what it is that you want to present. Mm. And I guess you want people to have a gut reaction to your to your clothes, especially like the, the journalists and the buyers and the, the fashion community who are seeing the show. You know, it's interesting that as soon as people go into a show, everyone grabs the press release and immediately and reads it, and it's yeah. almost like they want to explain to them before yeah. they've even seen it. And I guess you do want... You know, great fashion is always a fashion that moves you. Mm. So I guess you want people to take the time to have that immediate yeah. reaction. I mean, we 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 toy every season. We've we've had a press release ready mm. to put down, and this season again we had we were trying to do something, but um, I, it it just it just feels so contrived. Yeah, because you don't do them, do you? Um, w- like I say, we've always we've always had them ready yeah. to go <laughs> to press print, but I've always stopped it because it's kind of. Um, and I know it's 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 it's. I just like people to um, to have a reaction um, and to not feel like they they they're wrong because mm. there's no right answer. You know, it's like um, that um, amazing interview that Lady Gaga did in a culture show of mm-hmm. like, I I do my work, but I don't know if it's good or if I don't know if it's mm. bad, and it's it's so kind of perfect in a way because it's like it's completely right it's everything so subjective and Mm. it's like who you know I think this is kind of fun and somebody else may think you know it's like I was reading all these things about sci-fi and it's like people are just so like incessantly trying to put everything into a little 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 thing and it's like so it kind of kills me a little bit when when but I understand it's like people need a frame of reference and people need to contextualize things to be able to understand them or make them understandable to somebody who doesn't necessarily know my work or mm. has seen the show or seen the video or um it just seems a little easy i mm. don't know i think for me it's a little uh, difficult and i always have a problem with that um but yeah maybe it's my fault for not doing press releases no maybe. it's not your fault <laughs> never change maybe if we did that um the the maybe get it a bit but more I, no, but I think it's so, it's so interesting what you say because i think a press release it, it is that thing where if you think it was about something else you're told it's wrong it just feels really there. corporate yeah it feels like this is what we're doing this season um and it's like it's not it's like this is what i do um and it just feels a little like a little mm. like um it, it doesn't sit very well with me i guess for you, you should do one of those press releases where they just list all the fabrications and techniques per look. Yeah, because that's I always. I think it rude. needs to be a little bit more abstracted than a. Than a. This is what I was thinking. It is a to Z of pin mm. by numbers. Mm. <laughs> Talking about this look, because I've paused on this because this is your fashion east thing coming back. Yes, indeed. Because from t- is it 2005, 2004, five. It was. Um, it was January. Actually, it's ten years in um, February. Oh wow. Of 2000. Uh, next year. Yeah, so crazy, almost, 10 years. So what's the year this? 14. 14. So, well, yeah, so fif- 2005 it was. 2005, wow. <laughs> so yeah, tell me about why you wanted to kind of refer back to, to what you did for Fashion East. Well, Coming you know, it's, years, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's that whole um, thing of, you know, like, I love the Antiques Roadshow and everybody loves an automata. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sometimes it's that's really not what I was expecting <laughs> you to say. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's sometimes easy to feel like one as well, and it's as simple as that. It's kind of like wind up dolly. It's the hamster um, wheel again, isn't it? Yeah, it's the hamster wheel. So um, rather than having a girl running around the catwalk in a hamster wheel, <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not that much of a fan of catwalk theatrics. I thought this was quite apt to revisit because mm. you know it's kind of this collection again sort of 
you know, sort of me trying to evaluate, reevaluate, I guess, what I'm doing this for, or what I hold dear, or what is important. Mm. Um, and again, it's that whole thing of the channeling out of the other voice, or the noise, or the, oh, will people like it? Will people not? Mm. Um, and just thinking to do things, what, um, what trying to do what you want to do. And mm. I think that's, you know, that's what I was doing with Fashion East right at the beginning and with the first few stories that I did on my own. It was, there was no, there was no commercial involvement after the, mm. after the show was finished. That was all just the show and it was finished because, mm. you know, I kind of started as a, um, kind of a last minute fill in, I think, as Fashion East. <laughs> um, so there was no time to sort of get anything in place. So mm. um, once you, it's like the snowball effect, once you start doing it, it's very hard to, uh, take a take a breath and sort out the infrastructure that you need mm. um, to be able to sell a collection, to be able to produce a collection. Mm. So it was, you know, a big play, game of catch up, and mm. um, that I've been playing ever since, I guess. Mm. So to kind of go back and uh, remember that moment of just doing it for the love of doing it mm. was really important, I think, for this, especially for this collection. Mm, yeah, that's interesting that you yeah. say that. Did it make you, it must have made you kind of think about how far you've come and what's changed. A, a, it must have made you think about that a lot. Yeah, Seems like you were mulling that over anyway, but then to revisit so clearly. Yeah, um, but I don't know. I mean, from the, from the outside, it, it might be, but I think from the, yeah, from the, in, look, the inside looking out, I not a lot has changed, you know. Mm. My, um, the way that I work is very, um, is very, you know, obviously things have changed for the better. Mm. Um, and, you know, I have a, a great factory and um, I'm able to sell my clothes. And, mm. um, but yeah, things haven't, you know, my team's very small, mm. um, which is kind of how I like it, I guess. Mm. Um, I'm a Virgo, I like to control things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, but it's, 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 very, it's, it's very much sort of the same ilk of how it started, I mm. think. Um, just a very few people trying to do something. Mm. Yeah. Talk to me about this silver because it's so beautiful. Did you want something that just because this you talked a lot about this kind of idea of stripping back and purity, but then the silver came out and it yeah. Well, you know, we did. Um, you know, I think it was like spring summer eleven when we used a lot of silver mm. um, in the collection, and I kind of really like it in the fact it's it's like a non. It's like black. It's like a yeah, non-color. Non um, the fact that it sort of reflects everything around it um, and almost kind of almost becomes invisible. Um, um, and the idea of, I don't know, Katie, I mean, not something that I was thinking about, but <laughs> Katie was thinking about this idea of reflection and thinking mm. about maybe it's like what I have done and what I want to achieve going forwards. Mm. Um, like I say, I don't think about things so much. I just <laughs> found this fabric and it seemed right and I mm. got very excited about it. It was actually for a different project. It wasn't really supposed to be for the show. Um, and my factory were looking for this uh, fabric for like three months. It came, I was like, oh my God, it's perfect. Mm. So we used it um, and yeah, it was a fun thing. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's interesting because we talked about Fashion East just now and then we just mentioned Spring Summer 11, which is absolutely beautiful shade. Cause mm. it, it's interesting because it did feel a lot like there were references to, it, was not, it wasn't a greatest hits collection, but it felt like you were looking back to, yeah. was that quite deliberate as well? Or was that always just something that quite, happens quite organically? Well, I think it's difficult um, to really answer that in a in a good way because obviously it's I don't know it's um, it all comes from me. Yeah. So I guess it's always going to have that thread of oh that looks like you know mm. like we don't I never really set out to um, completely turn everything on its head. It's mm. nice to have um, things that filter back and come in and out of focus. Mm. Um, you know I'm not kind of saying this is, um, you know, there's a lot of things in this show that um, we've done for seasons, mm. um, but I think it's nice to be able to have things, like a palette, I guess, mm. to be able to have things that you do and reinvent those things rather than, um, you know, um, that whole Carl quote about like the jacket, it's like, mm. you know, body, two sleeves, it's like, you know, there's, what do you do with that? But there's so many different things, you can. things that you can, or different um, connotations of that, that mm. it's kind of nice to be able to sort of go back and not sort of be necessarily self-referential, but mm. just to sort of not 
not do something and then completely disregard it and mm. try and do something else, but it's just working through an idea. Mm. Um, and this obviously made a lot of sense with this connection to the idea of working through something over and over again. It was an idea about repetition. There was a lot mm. of very similar shapes yeah. in this show, and it was again that idea of the metronome and that monotony and mm. that um, clarity from that chaoticness and like you know how far could we go with that mm. um so yeah mm. no, that makes <laughs> sense that makes sense talk to me about this because this this was so beautifully striking i think also given how impressive and wonderful uh, last season was and this seemed to tie to that really clearly yeah. T talk to me a little bit about it and like even just how how long did it take <laughs> <laughs> well that's obviously where the spray paint came in yeah <laughs> like little plastic slides that we kind of back spray painted and there was other there was kind of spray painted slides and there was slides that were covered in like an adhesive violin mm. um, so all different shades of white and you know we've done this tile thing before yeah. where it's a little bit like armor and it's very geometric mm. and very symmetric and very um, you know very kind of visually striking but mm. to do it all in the same tone and to not have you know each tile is a different shape and it's all kind of Put on Much more it. haphazard. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it was it was nice to do something that felt more free, mm. um, and something that has a real nice movement to it. Normally, I would make sure everything was very precise, and mm. um, you know, they were just kind of sewn on in one hole, so they were kind of swinging around, mm. and each one had their own life and. Sort Which is very different to those kind of holocron armour pieces where it's yeah. much more kind of structured. I mean, it? a very similar feel, but very different end result, I guess. Yeah. Um, so it was nice to have an element of that sort of armorial, mm. um, gone crazy <laughs> thing in there. <laughs> no, it yeah. was beautiful, that piece. It was really gorgeous. And, and then, yeah, the... It's kind of like a Billy Elliot reference, you know, that... Um, yeah, which comes in with the music later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't miss that one, didn't no, you? No, I didn't. It doesn't really get happy. much past you, Lou, do we? <laughs> 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 no, with the, you know, the kind of riot shields, mm. this whole section was very, like, very high, very, quite kind of confrontational, mm. um, sort of that idea of um, riot, I guess, mm. that, um, you know, those banging the yeah. riot shields. Um, and then going into sort of like these weird calico neoprene covered in clear plastic um, shapes that sort of, for me, sort of always reference those people, those very strange people who keep um, their couches with the oh, yeah. covers on. Oh yeah, like people that keep the covers on their mobile phones when they get a new mobile yeah, phone, that annoys that. me so much. <laughs> I hate it, I Something always just rip want to rip off. them off. Yeah, it's so frustrating. <laughs> it's like, why would you have yeah. a cool phone? Yeah. This idea of trying to keep something pure, trying to keep something pristine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wiped which I down. thought was, yeah, wiped yeah. clean. <laughs> yeah. And purpose. Going back, I like that we've talked a little bit about repetition. You said, you know, you wanted this to feel that monotony, but I think that was something that was quite interesting about the collection, because when you say monotony, that surprised me a bit, because there was that kind of repetition of pieces, but then the mix-up thing comes into that, yeah. I guess, which stops it feeling kind of like you're seeing the same look multiple times. Yeah, because yeah, we didn't want to show it like ruffles, shirling, yeah. tiles, you know, there's all these, like I said, and silver, there's all these groups that are in the show, and mm. it's very... It's kind of important to do that when, especially working in the factory, it's like mm. people need to have some sort of order. Mm. Um, but once you have all of those things in place, it was really nice and really great to sort of just like mess around with it. Mm. It's trying very hard not to say the F word there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just about. But that kind is of a big departure, I think. I know it's a simplistic sort of observation, but your collections do feel very segmented. They feel very blocked. You know, there's always a, obviously a consistent thread running through them. Yeah. But I think something you've always worked with is that kind of blocking. Mm. So yeah. th that for me felt really new this season that it was. Yeah, and it was also really. It took the pressure off backstage, you know, mm. if, if a girl misses that change, it's fine, she can go out next. <laughs> um, <laughs> which we didn't share with our addresses because it was like, get changed. But, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> it, it changes the whole dynamic of the show when it kind of just feels like, um, you know, because my first, it reminded me actually of my first show in Paris, that black and white one, where 
the, the people working on my show um, who were working also on the show in the studio, everybody knew it was white at the front, black at the back. <laughs> and then somebody puts on someone's second look on black at the front, it's like, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, we lost this look uh, because there was a very definite group that they couldn't come out with. Yeah. Um, so it was like, we just completely lost it. And that stuck with you, I guess, that frustration. It stuck with me, it was so, fr you know, the, <laughs> the Virgo thing, it's yeah. like, <laughs> so, um, but no, everything went well with this season. It was, yeah. we, you know, we, we try and keep everything as simple as possible because mm. it's that thing, like, if you can't, you can't do it yourself mm. when you're doing the show. You have to just you be have to there let go, don't you? checking the looks and you have to be at the front just before they walk out and you have to just kind of give that, um, I mean, it's what I was talking about when I was doing that video with Ruth the mm -hmm. first time that, you know, like you don't have control of the fashion show. Mm. You you rely on so many different elements, and and each one it's like the domino effect. Yeah. If one of those things drops, and mm. um, everything could mess up. So um, yeah, it's a difficult thing for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got we had a great team this season, yeah. and everybody sort of worked together. So it was a. Uh, yeah, everything went, went everything swimmingly. Well. <laughs> it's, well, it's interesting that you say fun, because you said that word a lot during during this, and I just want to get that full look, because it does feel like that was, it's not a word I think people would naturally look at, I know from your roots with the whole clubbing thing, people would look at it, but I think there's always something that feels very sort of intellectual and romantic about your work, perhaps, and in some of the most recent stuff but before, you know, people, it's that awful thing that you're saying, everyone's always like, oh, sky fi futuristic and stuff. Yeah, so it's yeah. interesting to hear you talk so firmly about this being about fun and I guess freedom in, in that sense. Yeah. Was it, because there's two things, I guess it was fun to sort of, that comes through in the show and there's that slight sort of subversive playfulness, but also in the pieces, there's, was the, did you want it to feel kind of a little bit subversive and playful? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, um, it is fun to be able to start, kind of go to Leyland's DIY shop and buy like a big roll of plastic and make a, make like our finale look for the show. <laughs> and, um, and to be able to put something together that all makes sense um, as a unit, but when you break it apart, it all makes sense. It's, it's not as if you have to, it, I'm not saying there's a beginning or an end to this story. I think mm. that's the thing. It's like, and it, again, that's something that transfers to a lot of different elements of the way that I work. It's mm. not like this is, this is the, um, you know, it, 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 it all, it, I kind of, I think it goes back to what I always say about, you know, people always ask me like, oh, how did you think, feel that show went? Mm. Um, and you know, I, t I think for me, it's always really important to feel that very definite um, sense of dissatisfaction with whatever <laughs> you do. <laughs> it makes you want to do more, doesn't it? Because then it makes yeah. you want to do more. Because, you know, if you were to ever, um, if I was to ever step back from a collection or a show or a garment or whatever, or an image and say, that's the best thing I could ever do, it's the worst thing you can say as a, someone who is, is creative. Because if you've reached that nirvana point of um, perfection, then done the search is over mm. you know why do anything else because so t to to always be critical and to always kind of see the bad in things it's kind of a quite sadistic way of, of working but mm. it's it's it really helps mm. makes you get up mm. the next day and want to do more but that sounds like it must be quite hard for you to, then to enjoy working on the collection so it's intriguing then that you you did talk about fun so much with this one because yeah. was it that element of letting go a little bit too? Yeah, exactly. It's it's not trying to worry about you know there's so many different elements that you have mm. to worry about with the show and it's it's actually to worry about the show and the the things that people buy from that and worry about whether people will like it or not and it's not something that I really um, um, really think about whether mm. people like it or not because I ultimately I don't really care. Um, <laughs> But you know, it's like one of those things that I know a lot of other designers or a lot of designers go through, and mm. um, you know, it's a consideration. It's it's um, it's it's always something that may risk stopping you from doing something that could be great. Mm. It's like people won't understand it, or I can't do that because of this. So mm. um, we just weren't worrying so much about anything other than does it feel right? Do we like it? Does it go together mm. well as an outfit? Yes, great, let's do it. Mm. Um, and in that way, putting, like working with Katie this season um, and putting the whole show together and doing the running order, it was so like much more fun than this whole like, oh, 
you know, it's, it's kind of like playing um, chess. Mm. I, I don't know how to play chess. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the way, I'm more of a draft person. <laughs> Backgammon. <laughs> yeah, or charades or something. But it's kind of like, you know, there is no, there's no, there's never a right or wrong answer. Mm. Um, and this season, because we knew that, um, it was, it was like that's what I say. It was mm. fun because it was, it was freedom. You had freedom, mm. and I think that's really important to give yourself because mm. um, the only th like, you know it's it's also that um how I had it was having this conversation years ago with um Alex Box and she was um we were talking about like something to do with work and I was like well I always wanted to use pink but I always feel like I can't do it it's like what do you mean um and then she said like you know it's like you decide what you do Mm. And it's like, maybe nobody would ever said that to me. Mm. <laughs> um, but to actually hear that, um, it's kind of quite a revelation because I didn't, I mean, obviously I, I'd realised that, but I maybe hadn't realised how caught up you can get in other people's um, sort of expectations mm. of what they want to see or what they're going to see from you. Mm. Um, so I think that was kind of an important thing for me to get away from it's like um you know it's that whole thing of being by put into a box mm. you know maybe it's to a certain extent I was putting myself into a box and yeah, it's kind of maybe trying sense. to get away from that a little bit because you know it's like why you know who is I mean I never think about it in terms of my girl <laughs> but it's like who is that and who's to say it's it's that or that or mm. why can't I use pink Mm. Why, why is that like strange? Why does it have to be like always seen in terms of sci-fi or, or in terms of goth? Or mm. It's um, just words, you know, at mm. the end of the day. So it's Sticks about wiping stones. Words, so. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. while we're on this one, talk yeah. to me about the hat. Because is it, is it Holy Mountain? Is that what it's inspired by? Well, yeah, I mean, we saw Holy Mountain and it's such an amazing film. Um, the fact it's so inexplicably kind of... You know, it's not like watching Fellini, where it's like it, the narrative's just completely non-existent mm. and it's just about images flashing up and it's beautiful, but you can't, it's very difficult to glean anything from it. Whereas I really, for the life of me, I, do you know the guy? No. No, I'm terrible with We'll Google with it. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd forget, it's like a really long Mexican name. But anyway, the, um, he made this film and you know the film. Yeah. And then right at the end, you know, they're looking, f they're looking for, like, Nirvana. Nirvana, exactly. And then he just tells the camera, because he's the director as well, which I didn't realise when I was watching the film. Did you know, that, that yeah. changes how you see yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then he, like, tells the camera to pan back, and it's, like, the sound crew, the light and rig, and it's just, like, it's a film. <laughs> and it's amazing, because it's just, like, this whole build-up to just... And it's kind of like, you know, as a designer who... Um, lives and works in London who goes over with their team you know like on the Eurostar taking mm. all of these like garment bags and boxes and you know we ship quite a bit but you know there's a lot of things <laughs> hand carried it does feel a lot like kind of smoke and mirrors mm. um, this whole like idea of doing a show in Paris sounds mm. very grand and the whole way of putting it together is so sort of like hand to mouth mm. and lo-fi that I really find that quite humorous and there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of sometimes yeah in retrospect there's a um there's a lot of connection between that idea of that guy telling the after this like fantastical um film um to kind of reveal the truth mm. um of actually what it is and then for us to do this um, it's kind of it's kind of like an X-ray, I guess, mm. um, or like you know, kind of me coming out doing my bare naked or something. <laughs> it feels very Why exposing. Didn't you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next season. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that. Yeah, but so um, talk to me about this though, because it's just absolutely amazing. How yeah, well, just kind of like a big plastic <laughs> jellyfish, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's all that plastic that you buy on a big roll from the DIY store and when you kind of doing your paint and decorate. And I love the fact mm. that it's, it references to the, the bin bag stuff that we yeah, do. Exactly, it's yeah, exactly, so, yeah. It's so 
not worked because mm. it's these, just these big swathes of fabric mm. but laid up on top of each other they look so like um kind of um iridescent mm. or there's like a pearliness to them mm. so they look quite rich in that respect mm. but yeah it's one of my favorite songs ever so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was this just because you've been watching Billy Elliot on repeat? Well, we kind of had actually, um, but that um, it's just that um, idea of um, I don't know. I guess the Holy Mountain thing. It's kind mm. of quite what's the word? There's not like a lot of incong incongruous. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's not a lot of. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because it's a, like it's about performance. It's yeah, about, exactly. Um, and it goes back to about this whole smoke and mirrors thing yeah. about this idea of something like the strive for something beautiful. <laughs> Thanks for pausing on that one, by the way. Um, <laughs> about trying to make something beautiful out of nothing. Mm. Um, and I think for me that was a big part of that, what that film was about. It's mm. kind of the want to do something and not really knowing why. Um, you want to do it just because you want to do it mm. um, and it goes no further than that so I thought that was a nice little tongue-in-cheek way of finishing off the, the show, the show. <laughs> it's interesting because throughout this this chat we've had it sounds like this collection was a very pivotal one for you and it, and it was about you know you thinking about why you're here what you're why you're doing what you're doing what your approach yeah. is seems like you wanted a lot of answers from this yeah did you get what you needed from it do you think um well I don't know it's kind of like I said it's a it's a work in progress and um has it, has it set your mind on the right path do you think i hope so i mean i there's a there's a lot of things to sort out um and deal with and change and evolve and um but that's exciting you mm. know um i don't deal with change very well but there's been so much of it over the past year like personally with business and with everything that um this was just one of those moments where things you know, to embrace that change mm. um, and to to go with it and to not feel the need to um, be so precious about everything. I was reading a great thing the other day about, I can't remember who, oh, it was Kareen Rothfeld was saying <laughs> about like, about her job and about the stress and it's like, it's only fashion. Mm. And it's kind of a very loaded thing to say, um, it's only clothes, because um, it's not. Um, but when you take it back it um it's 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 kind of that simple and mm. um we love it we hate it um you know it's uh it is what it is and um i am trying to do the best i can with what i have <laughs> <laughs> with my tools around me <laughs> um and yeah um so who knows what will happen next but um i think uh yeah i was i was i never really say that i'm happy with something but of, of course of what we talked about earlier yeah. um, but this was okay Aww. I could live with that <laughs> <laughs> Gareth thank you so much pleasure thank you